Kia ora and welcome to this video on question 3 of the 2019 Skull Calc exam. Uh, part A uh, is differentiation by first principles, a uh, nice short problem. Part B uh, is a related rates question, also a nice short problem. And then question 3c is a very contrived optimization problem about an ecologist going for a tramp um, and planting a boat in a lake to save less than a minute to their journey. Um, so I hope you enjoy get stuck into it. Okay, question A. The first thing to get uh, my head around this question um, is to have a look at the function. As I've been saying in a lot of these videos, if you've got a if you've got a graph, it pays to actually have a look at it. So we've got x squared minus 4x plus 3, uh, all squared. So I've made it a graph on Desmos already. Um, so we've got a quartic equation there, two turning points, uh, and we're looking at finding the value of the slope f dash uh, at the point 4. So I've currently got that in there. I've got a tangent drawn at the point x equals 4. And we can see that the slope there, um, it, if we look tracking the green line, it goes across 0.5 up Gosh, I don't know what the y-axis scale looks like. It's a positive slope. Um, it turns out that the answer is 12. Um, so that's kind of the first thing I do to get my head around what we're doing here. Um, of course, we can just use we can just use differentiation to find the slope. Okay, so if I if I was to use the chain rule and go dy dx, uh, rather than expand it out, the chain rule just allows us to differentiate. As it is, so the two comes down the front. Drop the power to a one, and then multiply by the inner derivative, which is two x minus four, uh, and then sub in x equals four into it. And we sub in x equals four into that. dy dx is two. Lots of sixteen minus sixteen plus three. So two lots of three times eight minus four. 2 lots of 3 is 6 times 4. Did I say the answer was 12? My bad. Uh, the answer is 24. Okay, so that's the, that's the sort of um, the value that we're looking for. But that isn't first principles, and the question does tell us to use that. So this first principles idea is if we go back to that um, graph, and we zoom in on that tangent which is drawn at x equals 4. Um, if I took a slight step to the right, so an h value that's very small, and then I take a vertical jump to get back onto the function, um, I would have two points on the graph of which I could find the slope between them. So what I mean by that is if I have, um, have this function, terrible straight line, then so I've got some function, and I've got one point here, which we know is x equals 4. And we've got another point here, which is a slight bit to the right. So I call this 4 plus h, where h is small. Then the slope of the tangent at the point x equals 4 is approximately equal to the slope of that line. So we've got the slope of that line there is rise over run. The rise is just the function value at 4 plus h minus the function value at 4, and the run is just h. And if we make h small, this point here is going to move down the curve towards the other point until a point where they're basically the same um, coordinate, and therefore the slope of the the chord there between two points is the same as the slope of the tangent. So that's that's what first principles is all about, and it's a limit. So we've been, we've been given this limit in the question. The limit is h approaches 0 of the rise over run, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But we're considering the point x equals 4, so we can replace the x's there with 4's. So f dash of 4 is equal... So the limit is h goes to 0, 
f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 all divided by h. To get my head around what this limit is doing, you could make h a really small number. So for example, um, if h is 0 0.001, then the numerator becomes the function value evaluated at 4.001. So if I just do that on my calculator and I replace, uh, I go back up to this original function here and I replace x with 4.001, Um, I get a function value of 9.02402, that will do. Uh, and then f of 4, well I already know what f of 4 is. Um, so I just sub in 4, I get 16 minus 16 plus 3, I get 9. And then my, my quotient there, my f dash of 4, is the difference between those dudes, which is the rise, 0 0.02402, divided by my run, which I said was h being 0 0.001. If I do that, I get a smidge over 24. I get 24.02. So that's with an h value of 0 0.001. Of course, if I make it smaller, I'm going to get an answer that approaches 24. But that, that's also not sufficient because that there, I've, I've used the calculator and I've also used an approximation technique. So none of that is um, suitable for the actual answer to this problem. So I need to move that all to the side. Okay, so actually the only thing I do want to keep is the f dash of 4. Okay, that's my starting point. Find the slope using first principles. So f dash of 4 is this quantity here. Okay, so what I need to do is replace um, the x values of 4 plus h, where h is not 0 0.001. It's just a small number, but I have to keep it as h. So I've got... Um, 4 plus h all squared, minus 4 lots of 4 plus h, plus 3 all squared, and then minus f of 4, but f of 4 is just 9, it's a constant, and divide that all by h. Now I can't make h 0, um, because I have division by 0, but what I can do is um, notice some cancellation in this stuff. For example, 3 squared is 9 is going to knock off with that minus 9. Um, and if I think about expanding this dude, it's a quadratic. If I and Inside the brackets is a quadratic. And then I square it, it's a power of 4. And then I divide by h, and all of the terms will still have h's in it, except for the linear term. So actually, I just want to find out the linear term of this expansion and then divide it by h to cancel the h's. Um, my, my point in telling you this is you don't have to expand this whole beast of an equation. You could just focus on um, you could just focus on one of the terms. Now, however, um, that's probably not what most people would have done in the exam. So if we just continue and expand it out. So we've got um, inside those first brackets 4 plus h squared is h squared plus 8h plus 16 and then we've got minus 16 minus 4h and plus 3 and that's all been squared and we cancel those we can simplify the rest so we've got Um, in the top we've got h squared plus 4h minus, sorry, plus 3 all squared minus 9 all over h um, now this is actually a difference of two squares 
So like rather than rather than expand it out and then subtract the nine off, um, I'm just going to use the fact that it's it's a squared minus b squared, which factors to a plus b a minus b, where my a um, is this dude, and my b is equal to three. Okay, that's going to be a lot quicker because if I Right, a plus b is going to be h squared plus 4h plus 3 plus 3. So h squared plus 4h plus 6. And then my other term is a minus b is going to be h squared plus 4h plus 3 minus 3. So just h squared plus 4h all divided by h. And then... I can divide out the h's because this factor here, I can lose an h from both those terms to cancel the h that's on the bottom. And that was the problem because I can't make h zero when it's in the denominator. So limit as h goes to zero of the first thing, I don't divide out the h's out of that because I'd be doing it twice if I did. It's just the second term where I would rewrite this as h plus four. And I've lost the h's in the denominator so now I can set h equal to 0, and oopsies, then the limit, um, so f dash of 4, um, 0, 0, 0, 0, makes 6 times 4 is 24. Okay, and so that's just a sneaky way of um, avoiding having to expand out that really big bracket, which was a trinomial squared um, and then cancel out the h's later there are other ways of doing it as well and i think the mark schedule uh, has a different way of doing it okay second question a point p is moving around the circle x squared plus y squared equals five squared when the coordinates are three four the y coordinates decreasing at the rate of two units per second what rate is the x coordinate changing so the first thing is this is a circle of radius 5 centered at the origin. Okay, so we've got drawing in a circle, pretty crappy circle, but we've got the point there of 3, 4, and that radius is 5, it's a Pythagorean triple, so this is the point P, and we're told uh, that the y coordinates decreasing at a rate of two units per second. So as p is moving around the circle, it must be going this way because the y value is going downwards at that point, and therefore the x value is increasing at that point if it's moving clockwise. Um, essentially, it's a rated, related rates problem because it says dy dt uh, is equal to minus two. Okay, decreasing at a rate of two units per second, and it's asking us to find uh, dx dt. Um, if you haven't seen problems like this in your calc class, it's a little bit confusing because this equation x squared plus y squared equals five squared doesn't have any t in it, like it doesn't have time. But because it's a rates question, x and y are changing with respect to time, so x and y are both functions of time. So we've got dy dt is minus two, a constant rate, and it's negative dx dt we're trying to find and a standard approach to this would be to go um, dx dt equals dy dt times by uh, dx dy okay that would be a related rates kind of um, question merit level maybe excellence level where you um, set up this equation and it's like you you have this one and you need this one uh, to find the dx dt um, and so x and y, this rate here, dx dy, comes from differentiating the circle equation, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and um, we can make x the subject of it, and then differentiate with respect to y, or we could make y the subject of it, differentiate with respect to x, and then flip it upside down. I'll do the first method, which is to go x equals... There is an easier way to do this, by the way. I'm going to look at it in a sec. Um, x equals 25 minus y squared square rooted. 
I take the positive root because x is positive in this in this question. Um, and then dx dy, I have to use the chain rule for this. It's something to the power of a half. The square root is a power of a half. So I drop the half down the front. 25 minus y squared to the negative 1 half multiplied by uh, the inner derivative of negative 2y. And that simplifies because the 2's cancel to negative y over the square root of 25 minus y squared. Okay, it's a power of negative a half, which is um, because it's negative, it drops down the bottom, and it's therefore a power of a half, which is a square root. So I can go dx dt is equal to minus 2 times by negative y over this stuff. And then I can sub in the point 3, 4. So when x equals 3, y equals 4, I just need the y value for this. If I sub it in, get minus 2 times by negative 4 divided by 25 minus 4 squared square rooted. And that comes out to be 8 thirds. Okay, and it's positive as we were saying because the x value is increasing. Now because time is an independent variable in this question, I have another option to solve this problem. A much more elegant way of doing it is to take the equation that you've got, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and recognize that x is actually x of t and y is actually y of t. So it's some function of t squared. Okay, it could be 2t, it could be, uh, well it's not because dx dt is 8 thirds, so it'll be 8 thirds of t, you know, there, there's some function hiding in there, and it's something squared. So when we differentiate this whole equation implicitly, implicit differentiation, I can just write 2x times dx dt. When I diff, um, using the chain rule, I bring the 2 down the front, so it's 2x, and then I multiply by the inner function differentiated, and if the inner function is a function of t, then the derivative of it will be dx dt. Do the same thing for the y squared, 2y dy dt, and the 25 diffs to 0. So implicit differentiation allows us to diff all of the terms as they are without rearranging them. And then I sub in all the information. Okay, x was 3. dx dt was the thing we're trying to find. y was 4. Uh, and dy dt was negative 2. And I rearrange this equation, make dx dt the subject. So the 2 times 4 times negative 2 part is um, negative 16, goes on the other side is 16. And then I divide by the 2 times 3 in front of the dx dt. 16 over 6 is 8 over 3. Much quicker. Okay, part C. Now, an ecologist is doing research in a national park. She must frequently travel between two huts, A and B, which are four kilometres apart. Okay, so the first up tells us if we've got the centre of the lake here. Um, let's call this 0, 0. For, then, um, then A is at the point negative 2 and B is at the point 2, if they're four kilometres apart. And I'll just chuck my axis through the middle here. Halfway between A and B is a square lake, of course there is, of edge root 2 kilometres. So if all of the sides are root 2 long, then um, this, this is a 1, 1 square root 2 triangle. Um, a diagonal bisects a square, um, so this angle must be 45 degrees, and therefore 1, 1 root 2. Um, the ecologist can tramp across land at 3 km per hour and there's a boat with a very small outboard motor that she can use to cross the lake if she wishes. The boat goes at 2.5 km an hour. Interestingly, the boat goes at a speed slower than she can actually tramp. <laughs> Let x be the perpendicular distance of a point C from the line AB. Uh, the boat's path CD is parallel to AB. The reason why these speeds have been chosen is if you get the ratio of the speeds wrong. So for example, we made the boat faster or we made it... Uh, half as fast, you know, the ratio of the speeds matters for this question as to whether there's stationary points. Um, 
and so they've, they've obviously designed this question so that it has a stationary point because we're looking for a minimum um, minimum time and so the ratio of these speeds is somewhat contrived. Let x be the perpendicular distance of a point C from the line AB. Okay, so that's in there. That's our independent variable. Where should the boat be positioned so that her journey between the huts takes the minimum time? Okay, so we're minimizing time. Time, time is our dependent variable. X is our independent variable. And then we've got a whole heap of things in the question that don't change, like the lake doesn't move, um, its size doesn't change, and the huts don't move. Okay, so x, we need to write t in terms of x, and then differentiate to find the stationary point. Before we do that though, I'm just going to have a look at the answer, uh, benefits of having a little bit of technology here. So I've pre-made this uh, lake. Um, to the dimensions that the question has and I've put in all the information so as you can see there the two huts A and B are four kilometers apart and she she's going to walk in the bush um, to a point somewhere on the lake boundary where there's miraculously a boat waiting for her she'll use the boat assuming no time lost to get into the boat it's all instantaneous um, she uses the boat to go straight across the lake and then she gets out of the boat again instantaneously and tramps to B, assuming she's got the same speed at B, but even if she's a little bit wet. Okay, so what I've done down the bottom here, there is a coordinate, it says J, J is actually X, I just, um, I couldn't call it X, because GeoGebra thinks X is a, a variable, uh, but, um, it, you know, thinks X axis, Y axis, so, but um, that J there, point, point 0.43, is the size of that line segment x and so it ranges from zero when we don't have a triangle all the way up to one which is half the diagonal of the lake okay so and as x changes the thing underneath that on the left t i've taken i found the time for the journey the distance g is the first straight line distance i divide that by the speed distance divided by speed equals time so assuming constant rate speed that distance g divided by 3 it gives us the time for the first leg of the journey. Um, h divided by 2.5 is the time that the boat um, for the boat's journey, and then i over 3 as well on the right hand side. Um, and so that time currently is taking 1.449 hours because uh, the speeds are in kilometers an hour and the distances are in kilometers. 1.449 hours. If I move x a little bit, the time slightly changes to 1.45 if and I increase if I increase x it gets up to 1.46 1.47 1.48 so it seems like there's a minimum there's a minimum time in there and it's only slightly better than walking around the lake um, to make that a bit clearer on the right hand side I've got this other plot and this is plotting the independent variable x against the dependent variable time. So if I move that slider, it shows us that there's a minimum position about here. If she walks to that position, takes the boat over, then walks to the second hut, that will take her the minimum amount of time. If she goes to any other position, it's a longer amount of time. So that right up the top here, when x is equal to one, that signifies her walking all the way around the lake in a straight line. She doesn't even get her feet wet. She walks right to the vertice of the vertex of the lake. Uh, if she goes to here, when x is zero, she's walking straight at the lake and taking the boat directly across, um, ma maximizing the use of the boat. But as you can see in there, because the boat's slow, that actually takes a little bit more on, on the, the graph on the right hand side. It takes a little bit more time than a position in here where she uses the boat and a bit of walking. Okay, so hopefully that picture helped you um, understand what the problem is. Let's get back to actually solving it. Okay, so we have time that needs to be written as a function of x. The first thing is, um, like I had in the GeoGebra thing, we need to find the time taken to go along that straight line there. The distance. Um, this is x, and 
what else do we know? Oh, have I stuffed that up? Wait a second, the, the huts are four kilometers apart from one another. Okay, cool. It turns out the diagonal of the square is, is two. Um, so this is definitely not drawn to scale. If the diagonal of the, um, the square is two, this is one and this is one. So that right angle triangle that we've got in here, we need to use Pythagoras on it. Okay, that right angle triangle, this is one plus x all squared plus x squared square rooted. That's the distance along that thing. It's also the same as the distance on the other side here, um, db. This distance is the same and the speed is the same. So we've got time equals two lots of that distance. Um, and I can expand the stuff underneath as well. One plus x all squared is, is x squared plus another x squared is 2x squared uh, plus 2x plus 1. And that's all divided by 3. Distance divided by speed equals time. And then the other part of the journey, which is uh, this bit in here on the boat, um, using symmetry this would be x and the whole diagonal is 2 so this length is 2 minus x so the time by boat is 2 minus x all divided by 2.5 okay and if we add those two times together we get the total time and bearing in mind I've put the 2 in there so I've already factored in the right hand side as well okay let's move that into my answer. Time is that uh, plus 2 minus x, oh, 2 minus 2x, all over 2.5. Is that right? Sorry, it wasn't 2 minus x at all, it was 2 minus 2x. Hopefully you already were aware of that. Cool. So that's my total time. And I just need to differentiate this function uh, and then set it equal to zero to find the minimum time. So I'll just tidy this up first. I've got two thirds, two x squared plus two x plus one all to the half. And then I've got two divided by 2.5 and I've got minus uh, 2 divided by 2.5, which is 0.8, minus 0.8x. If I diff it, dt dx, half comes down the front, times this by the 2 thirds to give a third. Power drops to minus a half, and I times by the inner function differentiated, 4x plus 2. Um, okay, that's the first term differentiated. The 2 over 2.5 is a constant, so that disappears. And the last term minus 0.8x diffs to minus 0.8, and that equals zero at a stationary point. Okay, I've got to um, solve this equation. So again, I'm going to tidy it up. 4x plus 2 all over 3 lots of square root 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0.8. And move the minus 0.8 to the other side. Uh, times by 3, uh, actually cross multiply, 4x plus 2 equals 2.4 lots of square root 2x squared plus 2x plus 1, um, square both sides, so the left hand side 4x plus 2 all squared becomes 16x squared plus 16x plus 4, the right hand side 2.4 squared is 5.76 and then the square root disappears this is a quadratic equation so I move everything to the left hand side I've got 16 x squared take away 5.76 times 2 x squared 4.48 x squared the x's I've got 16 x minus 5.76 times 2 so plus 4.48 x and then 4 
minus 5.76. At this stage I just solve it on the graphics calculator, use the polynomial solver. And I get x equals uh, 0.3017 or x is negative 1.30. Um, so that's it's not 3017, it's 3018 if you round it correctly, and the other one's minus 1.3018. And uh, I re reject that one because I knew that x was between 0 and 1. Remember that when x was 0, that was going straight across on the boat, and x equals 1 was going straight around the lake without using the boat. Okay, so this is um, a stationary point. I could then test, um, I should test whether it's a min or a max. Um, that's a really quick thing to do, testing. I think the question itself said justify that this is a minimum. If I choose x equals 0.3, which is slightly less, and if I look at the derivative, um, I sub in, I'll just use the first derivative test, dt dx equals, um, and I'm going back to this expression here, I could diff again, but when the first derivative is messy, it, it's a bit tedious to diff again, 2 times 0.3 squared plus 2 times 0.3 plus 1, all to the power of negative a half, times by 4 times 0.3 plus 2, close brackets, minus 0.8. Okay, that dt dx gives us a negative number, minus 4.995 times 10 to the minus 4. And then if I test x equals 0.31, so I replace all my 0.3s with 0.31s, I'm going to get a positive number. dt dx equals 2.270 times 10 to the minus 3. So it's going from negative to positive, so it's like that. Negative, positive, 0. Therefore, x equals 0 0.3018 is a min. Let's see if I answered the question. Probably not quite. Where should the boat be positioned? OK, I have. Um, when x is 0 0.3018 uh, and it doesn't ask us to find the minimum time but let's just do this for a bit of a laugh so the minimum time when x is 0 0.3018 this remember bearing in mind that this this ecologist has gone out gone out of your way to get a boat um, so if I take this time function here and I'm going to use the table function of my graphics calculator so I don't have to keep subbing in different values, so I just type the whole function in as it is, and then just replace the x with different values. Okay, so I've, I've typed that function in, and I sub in x equals 0 0.3018, and that gives us a time of 1.4494 hours. Uh, let, let's look at x equals 0. x equals 0 was when she went straight across on the boat. 1.4666 hours. And x equals 1 when she walked around the lake and didn't worry about a boat. t equals 1.4907 hours. Let's just t turn that into minutes. Eighty-seven minutes. Eighty-eight minutes. Pretty much. A point. Both of them have been point nine. Eighty-nine point four minutes. <laughs> so it is optimal. It saves about a minute, uh, or saves two point four minutes. by getting the boat. 
Okay, and that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just checking that the answer's right. Yep, that matches. Um, catch you in the next one.